project on cookie based authentication. In the previous lecture we discussed an overview of the project and in today's lecture in this lecture we shall discuss cross site request forgery attacks. We shall also explain how an ASP.NET Core application is automatically protected against anti forgery attacks. So this is the topic of this lecture too. I should start with a practical example. Suppose there is a hacker who doesn't want to pay money and instead he wants to maliciously get a credit of 10 licenses from a website called abc.com. Also let us suppose that he has successfully guessed or obtained the URL and the form input parameters that will get his task done. So what he does is he hatches a plan to use social media to contact the administrator of that website. Maybe he runs an email campaign or maybe he contacts him through a Facebook page or something like that. And he somehow succeeds in getting him to open a page of his fake website.com. The malicious page that opens the page of his website, it contains a form with hidden fields of correct names and correct values. And with a button that looks like claim your award, like the buttons we commonly see on these websites that entice users. And the form posts the data to abc.com and not to fake website.com, it posts the data to the website of the administrator. Now the unsuspecting administrator, he happens to click that button. What happens is the data it gets posted to abc.com. Now if unfortunately the administrator were remembered by abc.com like we are usually remembered on Google websites or PayPal websites through that remember me button through that remember me checkbox. So if the administrator were remembered by abc.com and the authentication cookie was active then the damage would certainly be done. Let's see how. The browser sends the authentication cookie with the form data. As we know, a browser will always send the cookies to the website and if the user is remembered, the authentication cookie was present on the computer, the browser sends the authentication cookie with the form data and the request gets honored by abc.com because the cookie was an authentication cookie and the browser, it executes that request. Mission is completed. The hacker gets his 10 licenses for free. Now as per the Wikipedia data, the Wikipedia page I have listed below, you can see from that Wikipedia page that this vulnerability that I am talking about, it did exist in the Netflix's own website in the past. So this is quite a common attack and a very easy attack as you must have seen also. So now let us come to the point and discuss how ASP.NET Core Razor pages are protected against this scenario. Let us suppose abc.com were hosted as an ASP.NET Core application and if the and when the administrator requests a genuine form on abc.com by typing abc.com in the browser and if he requests the genuine form from abc.com what happens? The application sends the usual form with all the necessary input tags and with the submit button. Now there is an anti-forgery protection mechanism in place because it is an ASP.NET Core Razor page. There is an anti-forgery protection mechanism in place so it sends something else also. The application sends the form it's okay but it will also send him two copies of a randomly generated anti-forgery token. One copy will be sent in the form of a cookie and the other is sent as a hidden field in the form itself. This is a hidden field that contains a value, a anti-forgery token. There is a cookie that also goes to the client's browser. So now the user puts his own values into that form and when the form is submitted back, when the form is posted back, the client browser will send back the cookie because a browser has to send the cookies back. 
द कुकी कंटेन्स द एंटी फोर्जरी टोकन दैट एंटी फोर्जरी टोकन रिटर्न बैक टू द सर्वर थ्रू द कुकी एंड इट ऑल्सो कम्स टू द सर्वर एज ए पार्ट ऑफ द फॉर्म डेटा बिकॉज देर वॉज एन हिडन इनपुट फील्ड दैट कंसिस्टेड ऑफ दैट एंटी फोर्जरी टोकन सो द टू थिंग्स कम बैक टू द सर्वर now the application will validate the form request by matching both the values before passing to the database if the values match the request will be executed if they don't match the request will be ignored or an exception will be thrown so now what is the difference what difference does it make when the form comes from the fake website let's see see the form again the fake website can produce a fake form but it cannot know the value of the hidden anti forgery token in advance anti forgery tokens are generated just in time and they are generated randomly so a fake website it has no knowledge it has no ability to guess the anti forgery token so it cannot send a form with the anti forgery token as a hidden field in fact it cannot also send a cookie on behalf of some other website also so what happens when this request it reaches the server the server is unable to find the forgery token and when it doesn't find the anti forgery token it rejects the request so that damage is pre prevented now before i close some people might ask if some javascript could be used to obtain the form from abc.com a javascript could be run on a page loading event and a request be placed to the abc.com a hidden request goes and the hidden request brings the form and some manipulation is done and then posted back this is absolutely not possible why is it not possible because when you are requesting a form from fake website.com no browser allows a communication through scripts to another website this is a forbidden xss attack uh, ss request for xss requests are forbidden so such a communication would be impossible so it is not possible for javascript to communicate with abc.com in a hidden way so that's how it all works i'll close this lecture right now thank you